Oh, Frank, here. There's one, there's one, there's one. Here he comes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> that was nice. Awesome. I, I looked at it, I looked for a while, it wasn't moving. Well, that's a nice fish. It was just the shape of it. I thought, that just looks like a fish. So I cast my plastic two metres ahead of it, and it suddenly moved and went and ate it. That's a very nice fish, Nigel. It's convenient when they uh, play the game. I like these New Zealand fish now, that's one cast. A few seasons ago, we showcased an episode in the Snowy Mountains, polarizing big shoreline lake trout. I caught them on soft plastics that day. I've always wanted to come to one of the, the sight fishing capitals of the, on the planet, South Island, New Zealand, and see if we can recreate that same style of fishing, Frank. So it's a, a science experiment. That's why Frank's with us, Frank Prokop, fish scientist extraordinaire. Here is, with our apparatus for the day, we've got some spin rods, soft plastics and hard bodies. We've got some great polarizing sunglasses with us to help us see them in a, a range of conditions. Rivers or lakes are the order of the day. We've got the map out, we've got the car ready to go. Should we not see them here? First stop on the way. Are you ready? Bit of mad hey, bro. science experimentation. Let's do it. Let's go and find them. There's a real skill in sighting fish in shallow and deep clear water. And there's a lot of anglers out there that a lot better than I. What I've learned from them is find polarized lenses that you like, and you'll find that different shades and colors will help you see better in different conditions. For me, I like the, the yellows and the coppers I tend to find in just very variable light like we're getting today, you tend to see a little bit more. Try and find areas where you've got some form of wind chop break. It's a little bit of shelter from the wind. It just lets you see into the water a little bit more easily and then get good vantage points. And then it's all about getting your eye in. It's a bit like a, a game of cricket where you, you try to get your eye into hitting a ball. Well, this is trying to get the eye into see movement. You get a lot of rocks and weed patches that are fish-like. Takes you a little bit of time to get the hang of it. But when you first see that very first fish on a day, the eye starts getting in and then you'll find quickly you start seeing more and more. Looks good, I like the color change. Oh, Frank, here. There's one, there's one, there's one. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> that was nice. I, I looked at it, I looked for a while, it wasn't moving. Well, that's a nice fish. It was just the shape of it. I thought, that just looks like a fish. So I cast my plastic two metres ahead of it, and it suddenly moved and went and ate it. That's a very nice fish, Nigel. It's convenient when they, uh, play the game. I like these New Zealand fish now, that's one cast. It took us a while to see one, it's yeah. like tough, tough conditions, but benefit of having obviously the right shade of lens, cuts through a bit of that glare and that wind chop, and you're just looking for fishy looking shapes and shades. This bay was obviously deeper water, some little channels, not as much weed though, but haven't come that far into it and we've seen one fish and it's eaten. This is a good sign. <laughs> Check out that, Frank. Hey, that's a little ripper. Beautiful brown trout. Snow cap peaks in the background, crystal clear water, and you get to see the bite in front of you. It doesn't get a whole lot better than that, does it? And what a fit fish, too. Oh, wow. It, uh, every time I thought I had it half beaten, it carried on very well. Got to be happy with that. Beautiful, beautiful fish. And there's much a little soft plastic. I've gone with a little crustacean pattern. It seems to work pretty universal number all around the place. Little Berkeley pumpkin seed number. Browns, very natural color. Good place to start, small bite size. Lightly 1 24th ounce jig head, so it doesn't make a lot of commotion and lightly hopped on the bottom. And I think between us, a hard body approach and a soft approach, we're gonna cover the water well. Let's get this guy back and see if we can find another one, Frank. That's a cracking fish, Nigel, a cracker. You have to love that. It's a very subtle retrieve when you're fishing small soft plastics for cruising fish. The cast is generally the, the most important part of it. You don't want to spook the fish. You want to try and pick up the line of movement and cast far enough ahead of them and get it to the bottom without them seeing that because that tends to be what spooks them. Having got that cast in place, let your plastic sit on the bottom and this is where seeing the fish becomes so important because you want to wait until that fish gets within half a metre of your plastic. 
right up virtually once their nose is in front of that plastic, that's when you want to give it the slightest little hop. You just want to flutter the bottom and they'll pick up on that movement straight away. And once they've honed in on your plastic, you then watch how they behave. If they pause and don't want to eat it, give it another little hop. It's sometimes that second hop which makes them come and eat it. Once you see that little white mouth flapping, you can usually lift and hopefully that plastic's in there and you can set a hook. Doesn't always work, but when it does, it's a great feeling of satisfaction and so much fun. Got a fish sitting right about a metre off my, my plastic now. Eat it. Yes, got him. Yes. Woo! <laughs> Had a couple of shots. I was lucky, Frank. How cool is that? You get to watch the behaviour. Have a fish come and eat, how it responds to your lure. There is nothing better than that. They're pretty fit, these lake fish. You think you've got them covered and then they find another few gears. This is light finesse fishing, trout style, light two to four kilo spin outfits, four pound braid, five pound liters, really lightly weighted soft plastics. And how cool is this? Crystal clear water and beautiful brown trout. Look at this, Frank. <laughs> Aren't they pretty? Aren't they pretty? That's a lot of trout. So cool to sight fish them, just margin fish. I never get tired. I'm just trying to strategically work out how to catch a fish that you can see like that, doing its going about its daily feeding and survival. The brown death roll. He doesn't like you, Nige. No, he doesn't. Not quite ready. He is now. Oh, that's sensational. Aren't they so very pretty, Frank? Look at that. And you can see why I chose that colour soft plastic to start with. Look at that compared to the, the brown on that fish. It's a very, very natural colour. Always, I start with natural colours and then I go bright. Not like you, you're a bit funky. You like the bright ones, don't you, Frank? I do, mate. In, in, in reality, again, the, the very subtle technique seems to be the one that's um, working. Twitching it as slowly as you can when they're cruising. Get their attention. Just look awesome. at that, Nigel. So very awesome. It's worth the plane trip. Very much so.